Hello, I'm Greg Whitby and I'm here doing another interview in the series for ASA Teacher Magazine where we talk to teachers with some experience and talk about teachers learning. Today I'm here with uh, Renee Bly who is Assistant Hizzy Teacher at Xavier College in Landilo. Hello Renee, how are you? Good, how are you? I just want to talk to you about your teaching career, it's, you've had extensive experience and you're here at a really exciting time in education. Has much changed in your approach to learning and teaching in your period of teaching so far? Yeah, I think there has. There's obviously the passion's been one constant, but there's lots changed in the last 20 years. Uh, obviously, an increase in technology, uh, you know, a little bit more of an individualistic focus in society. So we're still trying to uh, harness and, you know, generate that community spirit in some schools and um, be part of that partnership with parents. Uh, here at Xavier College we do a number of things differently and well. Uh, one of those things is we have a Xavier Enquirer Learning uh, which focuses on project and problem based learning and our students uh, engage in a number of authentic tasks uh, where they work in groups or individually and they are able to work on real world problems, uh, you know, connect with their learning and make choices in that learning mm -hmm. and then transfer that understanding to different contexts, whether it be globally or within our communities. What made you move that way? Obviously you didn't start out with this approach to teaching. What, what sort of changed it for you? Uh, we obviously need to meet the needs of our learners here at Xavier College and something that we found was really important was listening to what they wanted in their learning. So student choice and student voice uh, was a big driver of that. Uh, also evidence-based practice. So we've spent a lot of time learning from uh, Michael McDowell who's an educator um, in the United States. And we've been looking at the ways that we can take their practices and uh, their routines and processes and apply them to our learners here. Mm -hmm. uh, we seek regular feedback from our students about what they enjoy about their learning and what they need in their learning. And we adapt our processes all the time in regards to that. Uh, and our students, are, sorry, our teachers are ongoing learners. So we uh, have a real focus on professional learning here and learning from each other. So we have a teacher observation reflective practice program where teachers spend time in each other's classrooms, uh, looking at the learning in those classrooms and offering feedback to teachers and learning things about their practice and how to improve their practice. <laughs> That's breathtaking in, in what you've done probably in a short period of time. You know, how did you actually get it going and you know, get it to the stage that you've got uh, now because it's so totally different to probably your previous experience and a lot of your teacher, your colleagues experience. Yeah, I think I've always been blessed to work with uh, you know, very impressive teachers and very good mentors as well. Uh, but the vision at Xavier College comes from our principal, Michael Pate, our, our North Star, who gives us that direction and, and really, um, you know, we are also obviously in connection with the, the diocese and collaborate with schools around us too. So our connections with our junior feeder schools or primary feeder schools and we learn a lot from them about how that works for their learners mm -hmm. and then applying it to our context too. What do you think you've learned about you know, leading change and obviously you're right at that centre point. Um, so if you reflect on, uh, yeah. on, on the lesson learned. Yeah, we've learnt to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Uh, we've learnt that change is important. Uh, we can't apply the exact same, you know, Xavier Inquirer process or feedback process that perhaps we had even two years ago because our learners evolve and are different. Uh, we've learnt to listen to our students and our communities and we've learnt to be okay with, uh, you know, sharing feedback amongst staff and offering that as an opportunity for growth. Have you noticed in your colleagues sort of a, a, an extra fatigue? Um, that comes with uh, this sort of approach because there's, there's so much just reflective practice that's required. Yeah, I think there and is. Design. Yeah, to be honest, I suppose over those 20 years, uh, certainly the administrative part of this role has changed and has become fairly heavy. Uh, there's no, no more fatigue, I guess, in the job. It's always been yeah. something that's pretty constant. 
I think that there is a fatigue point and everybody kind of jumps into that learning pit um, where we're sitting in, in the bottom there and kind of grappling with it. But there's something really energising about doing something new mm -hmm. and there's something really energising about, you know, learning new things all the time um, from your colleagues. So, yeah, there is a fatigue point, but it also is an opportunity for We've growth. talked about your colleagues and the staff. Let's talk about the kids, you know. If, again, if you reflect back on, you know, your 20 years and the feedback you've been able to give kids now, what difference do you find now in the approach you're taking here than perhaps in your previous experience? Yeah, I think our learners here are obviously globally connected, which is you know, an amazing thing as a HISI teacher. Um, so we can use that to our advantage. I do think they are living in a quite individualistic and materialistic world. So we have to place, you know, their values within that. We have to, um, you know, find those connections in terms of social justice and, and encourage them to be part of change and problem solving. Our students are up for the challenge though. Well, how do you then sort of report on that? You know, they're, they're, so they're sometimes perhaps we've got this discussion about soft skills and when you've described something outside of just the, the normal sort of test and test results. Yeah. You know? I think in a data driven world, we want numbers and things on paper. Um, but I think it's, and I do think that that is right. important and it has its place. But I think it's just as important for students to be hearing ongoing feedback about their learning, literally every lesson mm -hmm. from us and from their peers and also from their own reflections. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really important for them to receive written and verbal feedback mm -hmm. um, on their learning. I think it's important also that there's a joy in yeah. the, the learning too. Um, so in terms of feedback, I think it needs to be ongoing. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be growth based, mm -hmm. uh, but I do think that there is a place for data and reporting in there too. Yeah. yeah. And, and looking at, you know, at the impact, uh, the overall impact, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I think impact can be seen in so many areas. Yeah. The student that contacts you after being you know, out of school for 10 years who is a hizzy teacher or, you know, is in, yeah. a, in a site over in Europe that you taught them something yeah. about. I think that's yeah. impact. But I think impact also is about what our community looks like. Are our students a little kinder to each other? Mm -hmm. Are they a little bit more respectful mm -hmm. of the people within our community? Are our students wanting to to encourage recycling? Are they wanting to be involved in community-based projects? That's impact mm. because that's long-lasting. That's something that they'll take away with them. Well, I, you've taken my breath away. <laughs> and, uh, the, the kids are so lucky to have you and your colleagues. So thank you for sharing your experience thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Renee.